because we're going to be starting to film now, I'm going to introduce what we're doing tonight. So, hello everyone who's shown up to this class. So appreciate that you are joining me. Uh, tonight's class is a yin class and it's going to have a, a pinnacle pose that I like to call, or we all call, banana asana. And it's a pose that tackles an area of the body that gets very, very uh, stiff in a regular day because we're walking upright on, on, on Mother Earth. And um, so we're going to begin, you're going to be in the middle of your mat, so it's called banana asana, that's where we'll be headed here today. So you're going to begin in the middle of your mat, maybe pull the flesh away, and I hope you have either a rolled up towel, or if you do have blocks, that your blocks are with you. And you're going to bend your right knee, and you're going to get into a position that's really relaxed. So this, all these yin poses have nothing about the muscular, we're not forcing anything. In fact, the feet relax, the toes relax, the hands relax, and the jaw relax. So you're going to take your right foot, you're going to put it on either on the above your knee or below your knee, depending on your flexibility. And again, i got to pull the flesh out. And this is not about having a straight back. In fact, we're going to use the head as a way of, of creating some um, movement in our spine, but it's very, very gentle. We're going to be here for a little bit of time. So you want to be in a place where you can breathe absolutely. You're going to move your chest towards your left knee. You don't have to spread your toes. You don't have to do anything special around that. And if you find your right knee is really up high, maybe you stick that rolled up towel, the rolled up blanket, and, or the blocks, or all the blocks, or however many blocks you have. Oh, and here we are. We get permission to just sit. And if you have your beautiful music selection on, you get permission to just listen to beautiful music and you get to inhale and exhale so that you feel how the tissues are responding. They're responding to the weight of your torso, to how nice your breath is and because you're all alone in your little sanctuary wherever you set that up in your office, um, you could possibly close your eyes and this will allow you to go right in to what's happening in your body in terms of the tissues and how your breath is and how it feels as gravity is pulling your torso down over your left leg even if you can't physically notice it on the external, on the outside, somebody might not be able to see a difference but you can feel a difference. You can feel the right hip releasing. Another place when we work on our hips is that we bring the intensity that we're feeling in our hips into our face. And this is like a direct signal. When we grimace or uh, wince our face or do anything in terms of activity in our face, it tells the hips to tighten up. So we want to we want to trick our hips. We want to trick them in a way that says you can relax. There's nothing bad that's going to happen. It's only yoga. It's only gravity. So I find that if I smile through this when I'm feeling it, this is very very helpful for me. Just check in on your rib cage. It's the last rib moving. Hmm. And every time you feel that there's a sigh or a groan or a moan that's in you, make sure you let it go. Hmm. To distract you, if this has become a little more intense than you intended, you can move your hands over to the left and just explore what happens when you do that over to the left side of your left leg and then you can walk over to the right side 
So you can see the difference there. And you take an exhale and you release a little bit so that there can be movement and space created. And then over, again, the left leg. And maybe this time, just let, without kinking your neck and shutting off <laughs> circulation to your brain, maybe you let your head be super heavy. And you start thinking of your hair as super heavy, your eyebrows as super heavy. Nice. Using your fingertips, the most important part about yin, can't repeat it too many times, is the mindfulness, the softness, the slowness of coming out of the pose. So coming out, I'm using fingertips today because I always like to use them. I like to make sure that my hands and my fingers are have lots of space and are supple and strong. So we come up, oh, we feel what's happening. Some of you will want to grab your elbows, bring your arm bones overhead. Mm. Feel the weight of your arms going right into that right hip. See how much you can soften your belly and then release. Mm. And then take your right hand on the outside of your right knee and then just plant your right foot somewhere in front of your right buttock but so that you can just relax your arms and you can just feel, whoa, I can feel that femur just sliding down into the hip socket. And these moments where we pay attention to what's happening after a yin pose are the most important. Okay, so we're going to help our poor old right leg. Here we go. You'll notice it's a little longer. Bend your left knee. Flex your left foot just to get it organized. Then we'll release the left foot. Either put it above or below. Make sure your right leg is coming out of your right hip um, in a straight line. And your right knee is trying to be with as little effort as possible, not like oh, crunchiness. Um, your right knee is going to the ceiling. Now relax your feet. I'm going to pull my left foot up and we're going to start coming down and we're going to feel the weight of our arms oh, as part of this work. Oh. Coming down, releasing, whole body releasing, jaw releasing and definitely when we do the second side on yin there is potential to feel it a little more because the right side's already opened up, so now it's got, you know, it's allowing the left side to have this big open movement, this open space. So we're going to hang out here. Make sure your lowest rib oh, is the thing that's releasing tension. And your tummy can hang. In fact, that's, that's what we want. We don't want the tummy to stop what might be happening in the back body, along the back of your right leg, back of your right thigh, your right hip, ooh, your right low back. Hmm. So yin is, um, the yin practices that we do here are supportive of all our flow classes, are also supportive of all the things we do off of the mat. So to have full range of motion as much as we can, so our walking and our reaching and our balancing and all the things that we have to do in our regular life, oh and gardening of course, um, that these are things that are more of the, more sustained, we can do them for longer because we have this access, this whole range of motion in all of the large joints for sure in our bodies. Making sure you're inhaling and you're exhaling and even though this might feel a little difficult holding, that you're using all your strategies and the strategies are to smile <laughs> and um, 
to look maybe at your right toe, consider a manicure later. The lowest rib always moving on the exhale. And then if this becomes too intense to just be over your right leg, you can bring your hands over to the right. Oh, wow. Hmm. And of course, groaning, moaning, sighing, yawning. Those are things that we like to do as well in yin. And walking, if you've walked your hands over to the right, you can use your fingertips as you walk your hands over to the left. And just explore your full range of motion. How far can you go over to the left? Can you come down? And of course, here is a good place also to close your eyes and go in. Noticing, are you holding tension in your shoulders or your jaw or even your eyebrows? Mm. Ah. And then walking over to the center, again, over your right leg. I'm just feeling this. And those of you who do not have the mobility yet that I'm showing you, of course, you know you could be, I should have shown this at the beginning, but you can always just be where you need to be with your arms supporting behind or forward so that you can get what you need out of this particular pose tonight or today. Using your fingertips, come on up. Oh, and take your time, bent elbows. Try not to engage the core here. Use your arms. Whoa. Whew. Put your head on top of your spine. Ha. Ah. And then, for those of you who'd like to grab your elbows or put your arm bones overhead so that you can feel the weight. Keep your throat nice and open here. That you can feel the weight of your arms. Whoa, going right into that left hip. That's terrific. And then releasing, bring your arms down. Take the edge of your left foot. Bring your left foot forward. Take a moment here to just feel. So for those of you using your wrists a lot, you can flip the palms of your hands so that your wrists get a little bit of opening. We're going into a counter pose here for a few minutes. And our counter pose today is gonna to be child's pose. So you're gonna bend your knees, bring them over to the side so that you can carefully come again into the middle of the mat. And you're gonna be on shoelace side of your feet. Your knees can be wide. This might be a really great way to go into your first child's pose. You can also use blocks for your forehead or bolsters, blankies, whatever you'd like. I like to take my hands, this is the version I'm taking today, and bring the palms of my hands together, elbows out to the side, forehead on the pads of my thumbs, and then I'm just going to chill. Inhaling, <sighs> exhaling, feeling where the space in your hips is now reflected in your low back. And Use this opportunity in our counter pose to really allow breath to massage your organs, your chest, the back of your heart. You can even imagine that it's softening your face. Hmm. Lowest rib is moving. You can move your arms into a different position. You could bring them forward. Bring your knees together. Press down and forward. Shoelace side of the feet. Bring your forehead to the floor if you're able to or if you want to remove the block. Using your fingertips, bent elbows. Push yourself up to seated. Now going into the straddle pose. So the straddle pose for yin doesn't have to be so extreme. 
So we come into the middle of our mat and just bring our legs out. I'm just going to move my things around. And it's not like a, a yanking. So it's just like a comfortable kerplunk. And I like to take um, the left hand or the, the hand underneath each of the hamstrings and pull the flesh out, but also pull the flesh out of the buttocks. And you can do that on each side. Those of you who have very, very tight hamstrings, you would be sitting on your blocks, both of them, or your bolster, you're doing something that's supportive of you because the idea here is we're asking the tissues in the inside of our legs and in our hamstrings and in our low back to wake up, but in a very, very gentle way. So I'd like you to just flip your feet from side to side until they just land. And then just going to come so slowly. So curling your back, almost like a caterpillar kind of approach, letting your head be a heavy weight, Letting your arms be a heavy weight. And you just settle to a place where you can feel it. And then that would be the place where you just breathe and see if you can't feel something else letting go. So you'll know because you'll, your breath will become really perfect. And you'll also feel like, oh, I think I might be able to go another millimeter. And you come down to the place where you can come down. In this pose, I really like to encourage you to trick your body. This is an intense pose. And so tricking means maybe swaying from left to right, relaxing your jaw, smiling at the feedback of your legs. I like to say that your hamstrings are not in charge, even though they're very, very loud. <laughs> and then if you have a block, you may want to use a block to just block up your head because it's hard work holding up our head for this amount of time in these practices. And um, since we're trying to let all the muscles relax as well, we're not having that support for our head. So maybe it would be really a good idea today if you, instead of going all the way down to the place where you usually go down, that you support your head your forehead, so that you can relax your neck. Hmm. Every exhale, ha. Ah, let something go, whatever that means. Good tension, bad tension, all tension. Relax your hands. Notice if you've brought tension into your fingers or your palms of your hands, you could even Flip the palms of your hands to the ceiling so that your wrists could have a little bit of a rest and be supported. Hmm. And once again, to distract yourself, you have options here. You could, as low as you can go, you could crawl over so slowly that you're not disturbing things over to your left leg left hand on the outside, and maybe you just notice that you could bring your left knee and your left toes in line. You don't have to activate the toes though, but maybe you could find better alignment. Gently push the right hip back into the floor and then start moving. It's just a gentle movement. It's very subtle. Start moving your whole body around to the right. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then hang out here. And then maybe look at your right knee and try to figure out, can I bring my right knee a little bit more to this alignment of the right knee going to the ceiling? and the toes in line with that. And then walking all the way through. Again, come down as far as you can go. Here we go. And then use your fingertips and push yourself up to seated. Whoa. Oh, I always feel that in my neck. 
So just let those shoulders relax if you're like me and just wait for that to pass. The next pose is going to be a counter pose. It's going to be Sphinx pose. So we went forward with our spine and now we're going to go oppositely in Sphinx, which is kind of like a little bit of a back bend. So take your legs forward, feet forward, bring them to the side, and then gently come onto your tummies. You're going to feel something. Oh yes, oh, groaning is optional. So coming down can bring the roots of your toes together and bring your elbows right underneath your shoulders. Fingers are really wide. And this is a typical Sphinx pose in that the elbows are right underneath the shoulders. And um, you'll see this, we're holding it, that your, the tissues in your low back are going to respond. In my body, this, becomes prob this pose becomes a little problematic in my shoulders because my shoulders are really open and I'm, it's just my DNA. And so I'm going to move my elbows forward. This is an alternative so that I have more of stability bringing the palms together. And then I can work on dropping the shoulders away from my ears. <sighs> there are a number of strategies we do here in Sphinx. Because the intensity in the low back might be increasing for you, so you could press your 10 toenails into the floor. And this is a little bit of, a, of work lifting the knees. And as you press the 10 toenails on the floor, I'm going to just show with the regular Sphinx, you're also going to pull with your hands. Oh, that feels so good. It's like you're creating this space right where you need it. You can feel it in your tummy. And then when you relax your legs, bring your hands into a more neutral position, wherever that is, you can feel oh, the low back got a little bit of love. Keep breathing. And try not to drop your head. This is not recommended here. Our head is meant to be a counterweight for what's happening in our low backs, in our pelvis, so that we can feel grounded in the pelvis, in the front of the pelvis, but we also can feel how the tissues are being asked to do something. So this is a good thing. Now, it's been my experience with yin practices, and one of the reasons that the yin classes that I've taught over the years have had loyal followers, is this practice we know is so great, but it just seems so impossible to do on your own. So this is why we join a class, we go to YouTube, we do whatever we need to do so that we can hear another voice encouraging us and telling us to stay in the pose. Lowest rib moving. Ah. Just sigh, I just felt a whole movement to my low back just by sighing, groaning, moaning. Ah. In order to get out of this, we're going to go uh, very, very slowly, very deliberately into the counter pose for these two poses that we did, which was straddle and sphinx. We're going into the counter pose, which you know already, that's child's pose. So I like to tuck my toes under so I know where those are. Bend your elbows. Bring your hands close in, palms into your elbows, palms on the floor. Now this is hard to do, but curl your back and bring left knee forward towards your elbows, right knee forward, and go into a wide knee. I know I can, I can hardly speak. There's so much intensity. I know you're having the same thing. Low back, hips, responding. You can either use your blocks or elbows out to the side, forehead. Oh. And now use the space that you just created in your body. Breathe into it. Don't fight it. 
We want that space. It's good. You can also change your version of the child's pose at this moment. You can bring your knees together, shoelace side of the feet, curl your back, tuck your chin in, put the top of your head on the floor, roll your shoulders down, palms open to the ceiling, arms near your legs, fingers almost touching your toes. Let all that tension in your upper back let it melt. Ah. Use your fingertips, wherever they are, wherever your hands are, and slowly, slowly come back up to your version of Japanese seated posture. Those of you who cannot be on your knees, just come on to your hips and just do a fire log or cross leg, simple cross leg pose just for a moment and those of everyone whatever pose you're in seated I want you to just feel your pelvis ah moving forward your chest lifting your head on your spine and you can also feel your cervical curve you can feel your shoulders dropping you can feel all those shifts just from these very very simple held poses. Now we're going to be moving into a supported bridge pose. If you don't have a block, you'll be using your arms, this 90 degree arms, um, to be your support. So I'm going to turn so that you can kind of see me a little bit differently. I'm going to turn twice. <clears throat> You're going to come down onto your mat, feet are hip width apart. Just take one elbow and the other elbow. And you're going to come down to lying down. So my head is facing you now. I'm going to turn in a moment, but I want you to take your block. Feet are hip width apart. Mm. Pull your feet towards each other. Put whatever is the best height for your body underneath your sacrum. So that means the buttocks are forward and relaxed. A lot of people feel that when they bring their arm bones up and overhead, palms open to the ceiling, that this is very, very relaxing for their shoulders and allows the breath to move even more. I'm going to come out of this pose and turn around. You don't have to. I'm going to show supported without blocks. So your feet are hip width apart. You're going to come down again. Feels so good. You're going to make your elbows, your arm bones, 90 degrees, fingers to the ceiling. You're going to press the backs of your arms into the floor. And you're going to squish your elbows a little closer, a little closer, so they really are supports. Now, in this pose, it's not as relaxing as our other yin poses, and especially with this one where we're actively using our arms, but we're getting the same benefit. I want you to think of pulling air from your feet as if they were lungs all the way up into your chest, and when you exhale, you ah, your feet get heavier, back of your shoulders get heavier, and you can dig those elbows in a little bit closer. Mm. If you want to take, those of you who can do supported bridge with the palms of your hands and your sacrum and your fingers around your hips, then go ahead and do that. That's more of um, almost a full back bend. And that can feel like a supported bridge because there's not as much energy. We're using our bones to do this. This is your big chance to bring air through the whole front of your body. Mm. The whole front of your body. Releasing tension, good and bad, that you don't even know you have, but your body is wondering 
whether or not it should remind you of this tension later, usually at around 3 a.m. So this is a good pose to do before you go to bed, some version of a back bend, a supported bridge, beautiful way of signaling to the body. Doesn't have to wake you up and ask you to solve certain problems or situations that happen during your day. Mm. Those of you who have a block, I'd like you to remove the block. Those of you who have your arms at 90 degrees, I'd like you to take your, everybody to take your arms once you remove the block and the other people with the 90 degree arms. Bring your arms out, scarecrow style, so that you have the back of your heart. It's going to have plenty of space for the transition. The transition is tuck tail, pubic bone to sternum, and you're going to imagine that your spine is like a slinky and you're going to go slow, so slow. And the upper back, imagining each of the vertebrae touching, you're going to go slower than you want. Middle back, pull your feet towards your head, relax your hands, pull, pull, pull. Everything is going into the center. You're getting your mid back. Maybe you're going faster. Maybe you're going slower. You go at your rate, but do your best. And then when you finally get your low back on the floor, oh, you get such a reward, a rush. Oh, pelvis on the floor. Soles of feet to the long side of your mat. Knees tented. Shift the weight of your hips forward. Inchworm your body a little bit longer, your torso, so you have plenty of room for your cervical spine. Close your eyes and then watch your body respond to this, especially the back of your heart. Can you feel that spreading out? Can you feel the whole back trying to approach the mat because it has more space? Relax your jaw. Nice. Bring your knees into your chest. You can open your eyes now. Let's roll over to the left. Use your fingertips. Bend elbows. Push yourself up to seated. Let's come back into a child's pose. Our, our lovely counter pose. Knees can be together. They can be out. And curl your back and enter into this child's pose any way that makes sense for you. Curl your back a lot. Mm. I'm pulling my heels in this version, my arms alongside my legs and tucking my chin in, aiming my forehead and my eyes to a place just in front of my knees. Ha. Oh. We're going to come up and we're going to crawl forward for a little bit of a back bend. Another back bend. Come onto your bellies. This time your hands can be out wider than your mat and your toes can be to the long side of your mat. So just kind of spread out a little bit. You can be, I call this the seal family. You can be baby seal. Mm. You can be the mommy seal with your hands out to the side like I first showed so that you can feel that you can move from left to right. You can create this beautiful movement in your low back or you can be the alpha male, the seal that's so proud. And your hands right underneath your shoulders. That's right. And feel all that movement. Tuck your toes. That was just for a moment. I'm going right back into child's pose. 
this child's pose, I'd like you to swish your hips from left to right. Shoelace side of the feet. Ah, oh, breathing. Hmm. Hmm. And then coming back up into Japanese seated posture just for a moment. And then noticing, I really like coming back to these neutral poses so that I can see and I can notice and I can be motivated holding those poses, the in poses, and I can feel the difference in my spine and its relationship to my hips. <sighs> you can flip the palms of your hands. Breathing. Just feel how easily your breath is now moving through your rib cage. Hmm. And then if your eyes are closed, please open them. The next pose that we're going to do is we're going to be a banana. Banana asana. So I'm going to show this pose in both directions as well. We're going to talk about it in both directions. So we're going to take you don't have to change the directions. I do. We're going to take our bodies into the center of our mat. So my head is now facing you guys. And then when we get down here, resist the temptation to just zone out because you think it's Shavasana, which we all love, of course, which is coming up. But right now we're going to do this culmination pose, the pinnacle pose in this yin practice, which is banana asana. You're going to take your right foot and you're going to swing it over to the right far corner of your mat. Then you're going to bend your left knee and then, and then cross your left leg anywhere over your right. And now in my body, because I have a lot of flesh, I need to pull the flesh of my right buttock out of the way because what I want to achieve here is evenness in my pelvis on the mat, but directionally I want to feel my left hip, my left buttock, to be going towards the left. So that's the first thing. Then you're going to bring your elbows in, arms are 90 degrees, close into your rib cage, and you're going to start moving your torso so that your head now it's in the top, in my, in my case, the top right hand corner, so that the right side of my body is scrunched up and the left side is elongating. So now we're starting the shape of the banana. We're going to interlock our fingers the webbing, bring the hands behind your head, mm. and let your head. This be a heavy weight with the elbows out to the side. Now, readjust, just in a very subtle way, your left hip going to the floor so that you're feeling more and more of what's happening. And make sure your lowest rib is moving here. You're feeling more of what's happening on that left side of your body. Whoa. Relax your feet. Relax your jaw and just watch as the intensity of this pose starts to diminish. And if it does, of course, you can, you can make the stem of your banana. You can bring your arm bones up and overhead and you can move your body into more, more of a banana shape, maybe a rotten banana. I hope you're laughing. Left hip is moving, trying to move towards the left side of your mat. Ah, and if you brought your arm bones up and overhead to create the stem, you'll notice that you feel something along your left armpit, left rib cage, left waistline, maybe in your IT band, maybe along your whole left leg. Try to Really let gravity do this work. You don't have to do anything, but just lie around and breathe. Bring your elbows 
close into your rib cage. Keep your legs exactly there as you move your rib cage to the center, back to the center of your mat. Oh, and then just let that whole left waistline, in front of your left hip bone and behind, let that just be soft like a sponge, like a wet sponge, like you have that feeling that there's fluid there and it's all releasing. And now with minimal effort, you're going to take your left leg back into the center of your mat, bring your right leg back into the center of the mat, and then you're going to close your eyes, and you're going to feel the entire left side of your body feel so different than your right. I'm going to change my direction. You do not have to. Please don't. And then, so that my feet are now going to face the camera, I can hardly wait for this side. Coming down, you're going to take your left leg to the far left corner. And then cross your right leg on top. Pull the left buttock out of the way and let that right hip, oh, let that right hip be anchored. You really feel what it means to let the right hip move towards the right side. Take your elbows near your rib cage, and then start moving your whole body. Your arms are 90 degrees, so they're helping you inchworm your torso only. Your legs are an anchor. Your torso over to the left so that your head is trying to point towards the top left corner. When you get there and you think about your right hip again, Maybe you feel this more, maybe you feel this less. Usually the second time it's more. Interlock your fingers the webbing. Bring the hands behind your head. Palms open to the ceiling. <sighs> and then breathe. Maybe you close your eyes and you just watch how gravity is opening up your right side. And you stay there until this feeling diminishes a little bit. Maybe it won't diminish and you won't end up doing the following things and that's fine. If it diminishes, bring your arm bones up and overhead. Start moving your torso again into this beautiful shape, banana asana. And the more that you can do it, inchworming your body over Ooh, the more benefit you're going to get. You're going to feel it from your armpit, back of your shoulders, along your rib cage, oh, front and behind your right hip. This is one of the most difficult areas to open up in our bodies. It's a very useful area to open up for any of our poses in our standing work, for instance. Mm, side angle, triangle, down dog, up dog, forward bending, all forward bending, all back bending. This is often one of the places that is stuck. Oh. Make sure you take a big inhale and exhale, you sigh. Keep your legs exactly there. As you bring your elbows alongside your body, oh, you move. All these yin poses that we're doing can be done in any sequence. It can be done whenever you feel tension. Bring your body into the middle of your mat, your torso. Whenever you feel tension being built up and you can remember with your mind how good something felt, you can always come to the floor safely and move or hold a pose. So feeling our right side soften, becoming super aware of that, bring your right leg into the middle of the mat. Oh, your left leg. <sighs> bring your arms out to the side, palms open to the ceiling. Taking a moment here 
Those of you who need more things for your rest, you need to bend your knees, roll over to one side with bent elbows. You must move in this way so that you can maintain the space. Push yourself up to seated. I'm going to say my goodbyes. I hope that you have the things that are going to bring you into a beautiful Shavasana today. It means the world to me, really, truly, that you are joining me. Thank you so much. I hope the rest of your day, the rest of your evening, and everything you do is just filled with gratitude. Namaste.